Have you ever walked onto a wildlife reserve, wanted to take photos, but of more interesting things than animals? Like Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon. Well, apparently somebody at Nintendo did because in 1999 they released this, Pokemon Snap, which has since gone on to become the most cult of all the Pokemon spin-off games. In this game, we follow Todd Snap as he's hired by Professor Oak to document all 63 species of Pokemon on a mysterious island while on his own quest to get a photograph of the mysterious Pokemon Mew. Who is Todd Snap, you ask? Well, he's a character who appeared in three episodes of the first season of the Pokemon anime. This guy! Him! He got a spin-off game! Off an episode that, despite some terrible disguises and a very silly plot, became a fan favourite. Well hey, if Pikachu can have two terrible spin-off games, I guess Todd Snap, a burner character, can have at least one. Plus, you know, it's something to do while wait for, you know, that crap to get sorted. Let's play. The gameplay consists of the following. Sit inside the Zero One, a pod-style vehicle, aim your camera, take photos and interact with the Pokemon around you in one of three ways. The first is throwing apples at them for food, which can encourage certain Pokemon to come out or make special poses for the camera. The second is a pestable, which I'm pretty sure counts as animal cruelty and may or may not be a creation of the Monsanto Corporation. And the third and final is the pokey flute, that can make some Pokemon dance, can also make some Pokemon get really angry at you, looking at Kangaskhan. Effectively, it's a rail shooter, but instead of a gun, you're shooting with a camera and you have various tools to help you in your Pokemon Safari. Sounds dumb on paper. Like, really, really dumb. Here's the thing though, the really big thing is this game is actually pretty damn relaxing and really quite fun. Yeah, it's a cliche and a trope that a Pokemon spin-off based on a concept that seems foolproof is a failure, but it seems with this franchise that the silliest ideas always make the best spin-offs. Snap is a great example of this tradition in action, making a really fun title out of a concept so mundane. I had a blast with this when I was a kid, working out secrets with my brother and cousins while we tried to find all 63 in-game Pokemon, and that's why I decided to track down a copy to revisit it. Only revisiting this game now do I realise this game has one major crippling flaw. The game is really quite short, and I don't mean like six hours short, you know, like The Order 1886 or Rai Son of Rome. I don't even mean four hours short. I mean about two hours. Seriously, I didn't remember entirely everything, but I brushed off the rust fired up the game and got to the Mew stage in around an hour and 45 minutes. After that, it took me about 30 more minutes to get the last five Pokemon I missed to complete the Pokemon report. My final time for the game was two hours, 12 minutes and 28 seconds. And yes, you could argue there are certain variations of certain Pokemon out there to find. Things like Surfing Pikachu, Balloon Pikachu, which I couldn't damn do for the life of me. But they really don't have that much time. And to be fair, you don't need them to complete the game. I guess though, when it comes to some of the more cryptically hidden regular Pokemon, back in the 90s when this game came out, or the early 2000s, the game encouraged you to go among your friends and family and try to swap secrets to try and find everything. The problem is nowadays, for the five Pokemon I couldn't remember uh, before the Mew stage, I just kind of googled them. And yes, you can argue that you have to replay stages in order to get certain photographs or find the Pokemon signs, but it feels kind of shallow to say the least. But it's also one of the most relaxing games you can play, and honestly, there is a nice challenge in trying to get the best photo possible. I just kind of wish there was more game here, or hell, a follow-up of some kind. I know this topic has been beaten to death, but a sequel could easily work on the Wii U gamepad, on the 3DS, or even a smartphone. Think about those little augmented reality things you see on the mobile Facebook app from time to time, and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm not the only one with fond memories of this game, and Nintendo could very easily cash in on nostalgia here with a decent follow-up. But you know what? 
if you can track down a copy and you have a couple of free hours, go for it, have fun. Just only expect to really be entertained for those couple of hours. Can we also talk about how Professor Oak's photo grading makes like no fucking sense? The criteria is are pretty goddamn bizarre. Some things make sense, you know, like centering the Pokemon in the frame, but every now and then it's just, what? Dude, this picture of Moltres where it's coming down is so much better than the one I first took, but no, you want this one. This one where it's in a kind of a crappy pose and further away. And don't get me started on how few points Mew is worth. It's only the rarest Pokemon on the fucking... Calm down, calm down. It's a relaxing game. Just chill, chill. Play another stage. Ah, oh, okay. Relaxed, relaxed. You know, I have been way too relaxed while playing this game. It's like taking Clonopin. So, uh, I kind of need to do something. Next month, we're going to play something a little more... tense. Dun dun dun! Tense. Edgy, you little edge lord. Edgy the hedgy. Confirm we're doing Shadow of the Hedgehog. No, we're not. We're not. Probably not. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Edgy the hedgy, he's coming for the money's money's, his CPM, give me all your fucking views. Turn off our block, but don't feel obliged to, cause I don't really give a fuck. Cat, what are you doing to the rug? Well, okay, I give a fuck about the viewership, I just don't really give a fuck if he's that block or not. This is never gonna see the light of day, so I'm just gonna carry on doing it.